This video is not meant to accuse, but to inform the public. This is all just information I have found online that I'm putting into a video. Also, a trigger warning, I'm going to be talking briefly about domestic abuse, sexual assault, especially involving minors, and death via drug overdose and suicide. So please take care of yourself if those are hard topics for you. You don't scare me, but you should feel me. The sun is setting, don't trust your hearing. The TV show Glee, created by Ryan Murphy, was an iconic musical dramedy show centered around a high school glee club, which premiered in 2009 and ran up until 2015. It was definitely a hit for me when I was in high school since I was a freshman when it came out, and I was part of the drama and glee clubs in my school, so you could say I followed it pretty closely. Although some parts of the show have definitely not aged well. It's called a piano suit. Santana! Wheels! Gay kid! Come on, move it! Asian! Other Asian! Aretha! And Shaft. You guys, it's like cool epilepsy. Come on, guys. Other Asian. Get ready, black girl from Glee Club, whose name I can't remember right now. The puckster is about to make you his. I still find myself re-watching the show almost yearly as it's such a comfort show to me, a trademark of coming of age in the 2000s, as I was literally the same age as the characters when it was running on TV. But I've actually found that over the last few years, re-watching the show has actually become very hard to watch. Nostalgic musical numbers aside, of course. Ryan Murphy is a director and a producer who has won numerous awards for his work, including six Emmy Awards, a Golden Globe, and a Tony Award, as well as two Grammy nominations. Murphy started his career in 1999 with a show called Popular that only ran for two well-loved seasons and was allegedly, according to Murphy, cancelled because of the network being homophobic towards the show. He then created the show Nip Tuck, which aired in July 2003 and ran for six seasons in total, ending on the 100th episode of the series in March 2010. Due to the success of American Idol at the time, Ryan Murphy suggested a musical-themed show to Fox, and within 15 hours it was greenlit by the company. Thus, in May 2009, Glee would premiere and become an instant success. Like, literally with just one episode, it became a global sensation, with the target audience waiting anxiously for the second episode to premiere. Murphy then had many other successes to come after, such as American Horror Story, Scream Queens, American Crime Story, and a few Netflix series like The Politician, Feud, and Ratchet. I, and I'm sure many of you, look forward to any new material that comes out with Ryan Murphy's name on it. Ryan Murphy seems to have his little clique of actors that he really likes to continue working with on multiple projects. One of the biggest reasons I and many other fans keep coming back to his work. And it's sad to think that some people could have had a very long career with him, but fate had a different plan for them. Corey Allen Michael Monteith started his career in acting in Canada around 2004 and had minor roles in some popular TV shows and movies. Anyone remember Gary from Supernatural? Corey got his big break in 2009 when he was cast as the lead male Finn Hudson in Glee. He portrayed Finn perfectly, with boyish charm and adorable clumsiness. His character went on in the show to date Rachel Berry, played by Leah Michelle, whom he was engaged to in real life. Michelle and Monteith were supposed to be married in 2013. Corey also starred alongside Selena Gomez in 2011's Monte Carlo. Sadly though, Corey Monteith had a secret that was not so secret to his castmates on Glee. He had a serious drug problem that he had been struggling with since his early teens. On March 31st, 2013, Corey's publicist announced that he had admitted himself into a treatment facility. This was met with a lot of support from his Glee castmates, and Murphy temporarily wrote Finn's character out of the show. On April 26, 2013, it was reported that Corey had completed treatment at the facility and he was able to record one final episode of Glee. In that episode, he performs Journey's Don't Stop Believin', a haunting tribute to the pilot episode of the series that will be remembered forever by fans of the show.
Unfortunately for us all, on July 13, 2013, Corey Monteith was found dead in his hotel room in Vancouver, Canada. His cause of death was an accidental overdose of substances including heroin and alcohol, which when mixed can cause slowed heart rate and lack of oxygen to the lungs and brain. His death came a month after he got out of a rehab facility that his Glee castmates urged him to go to on set. Monteith is missed by his family and, of course, by Leah Michelle herself, who is still to this day haunted by the death of her late fiancé. When the night falls on you, you don't know what to do. Nothing you confess could make me love you less. I'll stand by you. Leah Michelle isn't the only Glee star who's experienced the untimely death of their love during the filming of Glee. Becca Tobin came into the Glee cast in season 4 as Kitty Wilde, the risque Quinn Fabre wannabe of the After the Original Cast is Gone crew. Yeah, this show could have ended at season 3 and I would have been happy. Anyway, Becca was apparently bullied in high school, so maybe that's why she did such a good job playing one in the show. I dealt with a lot of bullying from like the resident mean girls there. And I got to a point where I just avoided going to anything social, no pep rallies. I didn't walk at graduation. Now, um, I'm playing them on TV, so you're welcome. <laughs> While filming Glee, she was in a happy relationship with entrepreneur Matt Bendick. Matt was the owner of a few prestigious nightclubs and was doing really well for himself. In July 2014, Becca and Matt were on a business trip together and had gone out with a couple friends on July 9th. On July 10th, 2014, three days before the first anniversary of Corey Monteith's death, Matt Bendick suddenly had a heart attack, also in his hotel room, and sadly passed away. Becca was at a loss for words when he passed, and was silent for several months on the matter, and I can't say I blame her. I don't know how I'd function if that had happened to me. Becca is now happily married to entrepreneur Zach Martin. Another newbie in season 4 of Glee was Marley, played by Melissa Benoit. Melissa was the real-life Rachel Berry of the cast. She graduated high school in Colorado in 2007 and then moved to New York to pursue her dreams. She worked with Mariah Carey in 2008 in the movie Tennessee and had small roles in television until her big break with Glee in 2012. She went on to star as Supergirl herself in the CW show of the same title. This made her the first female to lead a superhero show since Wonder Woman in 1979. Melissa was dating and actually married her Glee co-star, Blake Jenner, who played yet another newbie, Ryder Lynn. Melissa and Blake began dating while working together on Glee and were engaged in 2013. They publicly announced their marriage in 2015. But Melissa later said they had been married for much longer before anyone knew. Melissa filed for a divorce in late 2016, citing irrefutable differences. That wasn't the only secret they were keeping from the public, however. In November of 2019, Melissa came forward to talk about the abuse she had suffered. I am a survivor of domestic violence, or IPV intimate partner violence, which is something I never in my life expected, I would say, let alone be broadcasting into the ether. The abuse was not violent at first. The first time it happened, he threw a smoothie at my face. It smacked my cheek and exploded all over the floor and the sofa. I ran to grab paper towels, rushing back because I was so worried about cleaning the couch. Then the fact that it was all over my face, my hair, my clothes, and that my cheek was painful, painfully throbbing. throbbing. I learned what it felt like to be pinned down and slapped repeatedly, punched so hard the wind was knocked out of me, dragged by my hair across pavement, head butted, pinched till my skin broke, shoved into a wall so hard the drywall broke, choked. I learned to lock myself in rooms, but quickly stopped because the door was inevitably broken down. And then he threw something at my face again, only this time it was significantly worse. It was a blow to my face with his iPhone. The impact tore my iris, nearly ruptured my eyeball, lacerated my skin, and broke my nose. My left eye swelled shut, I had a fat lip, blood was coursing down my face, and I can remember immediately screaming at the top of my lungs. The next morning, I was due to work on reshoots for a film. 
Melissa did not name the person at the time she came out about this, saying she had been fighting back with this person in self-defense before finally leaving. However, 11 months later, Blake Jenner did confirm the abuse. Not that it took a lot of rocket science to figure out. Jenner apologized on Instagram after going completely silent for a full year about the allegations and after a lot of public scrutiny. Melissa is now married to her Supergirl co-star, Chris Wood. Before his Glee days, Mark Salling wrote and produced his own music under the name Jericho. He played minor roles in a couple of horror movies before finally landing his breaking role in Glee in 2009 as Noah Puckerman, the bad guy football player with a secret passion for show tunes, apparently. Salling's role as Puck was a player sort of character who had a preference for seducing older women, ironically. Towards the end of the show, he seemed to have more of a liking for underage girls, which is just enabling his disgusting behavior, to be honest. I really can't believe that this was written and filmed, considering what was going on behind closed doors. I overheard you talking to that sophomore girl yesterday. Whoa, back off, dude. You got a fiancé. Plus, I called dibs on all the chicks whose boobs aren't done growing yet. Not that, okay? In 2013, Mark Salling was accused by an ex-girlfriend of sexual battery. Salling tried to countersue before settling out of court. Then in December of 2015, Salling was arrested in his Los Angeles home on suspicion of possession of child pornography. After a search warrant was initiated, police found over 50,000 pieces of child pornography downloaded between April and December 2015, many of which were depicting images of children under 5 years old. In May 2016, Salling was formally charged with possession of child pornography, and in September 2017, he pled guilty to the charges. Salling was expected to serve only four to seven years of jail time, as well as registering as a sex offender, which is a very light sentence if you ask me. But unfortunately for the victims of Salling's crimes, he was found dead by hanging on January 30th, 2018, just a few weeks before he was to self-surrender. A cowardly way out, in my opinion. Those children will never get justice. Naya Marie Rivera started her acting career when she was just four years old, landing some small modeling and commercial gigs and a role in a sitcom called The Royal Family in 1991. In 2009, Naya finally got her breakthrough as Santana Lopez in Glee, the at-first closeted lesbian with a fiery mean streak. She had an amazing vocal range with a down-to-earth raspiness in her voice that I still to this day am a little bit jealous of. Naya received two Grammy nominations for the role and was awarded and nominated for so many other awards as well. In 2011, she was signed to Columbia Records to start her own music career, but she unfortunately only made a single album. He's fabulously confident on everybody wondering, blame it on the fashion magazines. He's been studying fashion major, my boy's a major player, and we're so cool, they have no clue. In 2014, she starred in the horror film At the Devil's Door, and then in 2017, she played a supporting role in the comedy Mad Families. In 2017, she also started working on the YouTube Red series Step Up High Water, and was excited to be signed on for another season in May of 2020. Along her successful career, Naya was also the mother to an adorable son named Josie, who was born in 2015. Naya loved her son more than anything in the world, and she would have done absolutely anything for him. And ultimately, she did just that. On the morning of July 8, 2020, Naya and Josie went out for what they thought would be a nice boat ride and swim in Lake Piru in California. Unfortunately, hours later, Josie would be found asleep in their lifeboat, completely alone. According to the four-year-old, he and his mom went swimming on the lake and Naya helped him get back on the boat. He said he then saw her go underwater and briefly call for help, but unfortunately she did not come back up to the surface again. CCTV footage shows Naya and Josie from the moment they get to the lake to the moment they leave on the boat, with Naya never to be seen alive again. Five days later, on July 13th, 
Seven years to the exact day of Corey Monteith's death, Naya's body was found by a group of divers. Her cause of death was ruled an accidental drowning. I and many other fans are still shocked by this loss. Almost two years later, she is truly missed. Her death left her former Glee castmates in shock and remembering her on the one-year anniversary of Naya's death this past July. Needless to say, there are an alarming amount of tragedies that have happened to the former cast of Glee. The fact that Naya's body was found the exact day that Corey died is just so weird and eerie to me. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think it's a curse on Ryan Murphy's first hit show? Or is fate just a cruel goddess that we have no control over? I just know that what was once a comfort show to watch has now turned into kind of a cringe fest. To me, at least. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Stop playing! What the fuck? Stop playing! What the fuck is that? Ah! What the fuck? If you liked this video, please give it a like and maybe say something in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to subscribe or follow me on Twitter if you want. Thanks for watching.